from every tribe of Israel. There will be a great coming to the Lord. But these Jews, not real Jews. You see that all through the book of Acts, this constant persecution of Jews towards Christians. And you would think at this juncture that the Lord would say, you know what? And this church is going through a whole bunch of stuff already. In the midst of paganism, tribulation and trials, you're poverty stricken, you have no resources, you have Jews that are, that are evilly coming against you, speaking against you, and you would think the Lord would just say, you know what, that's it. Everything's over with. You're not going to suffer anymore. And then verse 10 comes in. The Lord says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. That you may be tried, and you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I, will, I mean, it's almost like the Lord just said, I know everything you're going through, but guess what? Let's stop right here. You're going to keep going through it. You see that word, behold? It's a word that refers to lift your eyes up, look in the distance, something else is coming. That's a prophecy. Let's put it in historical context. The elder of this congregation has just received this letter. He has just opened up the scroll. He's reading these verses to the congregation. And what they are hearing right now is listen, fear none of those things. What things is he talking about? You're about to be put in prison for 10 days by the devil. Right. I mean, what if someone came in here and told Mr. By the Sea that, hey, just want to let you know y'all doing great stuff here. But y'all are about to be put in prison for 10 days. That's a future prophecy that was spoken right here in the ears of this church. Right. Now, a lot of theologians, I went to Moody Bible Institute and I studied behind every guy you could study behind, Erwin Lutzer and Char, all those guys. And, and let me tell you something, I've read probably 20 commentaries, that's probably an understatement, probably 20 commentaries on this one verse over you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And they all say that the 10 days if some say that the 10 days refers to 10 years and some, I mean, they just, they muddle it so much. You know, sometimes commentaries can muddle the waters way more than just reading the Bible and taking it for what it is. Amen. I'm pretty sure that if God was trying to say that each one of these days actually meant a hundred years that he would have said it. I'm pretty sure that when God said 10 days, it means 10 days. Amen. That's right. And when you study some of these great theologians, they, got, they pull all these verses together out of other books, and they're like, this really means 10 years, and this really means 50 years, and they got so many different interpretations, and I just think the simple thing is to stick with the text, knowing that this is a real historical town and a real historical church, and what he's telling the church is, listen, congregation, you've been doing great thus far, but the devil's going to throw you into prison for 10 days. Amen. Right. That's what it means. Obviously, me and my personality and wanting to preach the Bible with biblical fidelity, I tried to search this and look it out in church history. Couldn't find anything on it. Couldn't find any record of this actually happened to this church. I mean, 10 days is a short time uh, of incarceration. But maybe it led to death. Maybe it led to release. The Scripture doesn't say. What the Scripture does say is that the Lord is giving them a command. Be faithful. Amen. When you go through what's about to go through in your life, you just be faithful. Amen. Even if it takes you all the way to the brink of death, you just be faithful. Right. Because remember, I'm the one that who's first and the last. I'm the one who died, and I'm the one who's alive forevermore. I'm the one that has the power to bring you out of the dust. Amen. Right. You just be faithful. Don't worry about their threatenings. Don't worry about being martyred. Don't worry about being thrown into prison and tried. You know what I really love about this verse? It really makes me think about the book of Job. How Job was tried in such an extensive way. And how Job was never called to the board meeting. I mean, God and the devil, when they're making this, talking about this 
interaction with Job. They, they didn't bring Job up to the board meeting and say, hey, Job, just want to let you know I'm going to let the devil just fool out force on you. That didn't happen. Job was tried and tested all the way through. Yes, he had bouts where he lacked in patience and was aggravated because he didn't understand what he was going through. And yes, the Lord laid into him, letting him know that he's the sovereign creator, that he orchestrates and sustains everything in creation. And then in the end, Job finally understands and he puts his hand over his mouth and he, and he, he just dives down in dust and ashes and said, I've, I've spoken things that are too wonderful for me. You've been there all along the way, God. Amen. And you know what I love about this verse? And you know what I love about the real church? The real church brings an indictment on the devil himself and shows the devil that he can't destroy real saving faith. Amen. And you know what? Every once in a while, the Lord, He'll take a church, He'll take a Job, and he'll elevate that job and elevate that church up a little bit higher so the world can just attack and attack and attack. And the whole time he's allowing but still sustaining. And every once in a while, he'll take that message and send it right back to the domain of the devil and say, this is what true saving faith looks like, buddy. Amen. Can't destroy it. Right. Can't terminate it. Can't cast it down. Right. The true church of Jesus Christ will always persevere. Amen. The true church of Jesus Christ can't be destroyed. Because it has an endless life. Right. That's what he's telling this church. You'll be tried. You'll be tested. Just stay faithful unto death. And I'll give you the crown of life. In verse 11, He that has an ear, let him hear. And that's really where the application comes in. You're sitting here today at Mission by the Sea and you're listening to the message from the Bible. My question to you is your spiritual ear really open? I know your physical ear is open, but is your spiritual ear open? Amen. Are you really hearing what the Scripture says to your heart? There's so many things in there compete with the voice of God. So many things in our heart compete with the Word of God. Right. When it's time to listen, do we really listen? And I know for some, this is a hard message to really apply to our lives because we've never been through any type of intense suffering. May I add this, that if you find yourself so feeble in the midst of such a small tribulation, Imagine brothers and sisters in other countries that are willing to give their lives for the faith. And then you ask yourself, where's your faith at? Amen. Feeble in so many different areas. Our Christianity is comfortable. Our Christianity is soft. Our Christianity is we can sit in our living room and prop our legs up on our dining room table with the cushion, the ease of the American dream and feel the air conditioning blowing on us and never even have to sacrifice one ounce of who we are for our faith. Right. It's not a bad thing. It's a blessing of God to be able to exercise our freedom of what we believe in this country, but sometimes I think it makes the church weak. Amen. We don't evangelize. There's no real urgency to tell our neighbors about the gospel. There's no real urgency to tell people that there's an eternal hell if they don't repent. There's no urgency. And for this church, I believe there was an urgency to spread the gospel. With that, let us pray. Lord, we, we thank You so much for being so patient with us. Our lives, we, we always want to demonstrate who You are. We always want to be known as great Christians. We always want to be seen as strong people of faith. 
people that have an undying commitment for you, and people that love you to the end. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our sincere desire to love you with everything that we have. And oftentimes, Lord, we're not put in positions that can either expose where our faith really is and help us to grow stronger. And we ask, Lord, that you would make other means and other methods, Lord, to prompt us to holiness, prompt us to be stronger in the faith, to have an urgency in our lives about being Christians, to be able to pray for those who are suffering under the hand of pagan rules in other countries. And Lord, this country may one day get that way. And give us the fortitude. And give us the strength. And give us the spiritual vision to see, to understand that our strength and our power comes from you. And Lord, if you are for us, nobody can be against us. We thank you for your death. We thank you for shedding your blood on the cross of Calvary to bring redemption to our souls, to forgive us eternally of our sins, and knowing that we are secure in your grip, that you have claimed us as your own. You have bought us with a price, and that price was your and give us more grace to live for you. Help us to be a church that honors you, a church that influences our neighbors and our community. Please spark a fire in our hearts. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name.